What's up, everyone? We are back again uh, in the studio, new and improved little juicy studio. Today, we're going to be running through my latest release, Orbit, which came out on Monster Cat. You guys have been asking for this one uh, non stop, so let's go into it. A little bit of a backstory, quick time. Um, so, this, as a lot of you could tell, is definitely inspired by like kind of early 2000s. Daft Punk, Justice, like Electro, French, Touch, House, you name it. Um, which is like, you know, they use a lot of sampling and like chopping up tiny little samples and making it into one whole thing that kind of sticks together. Uh, and that was the goal for this. But the goal was also to create this break that felt like it just really needed to resolve in... in intention like the tension just keeps building and building and building and building and building drop so yeah i think we achieved this but uh let's go into it so the first thing i did is i created this patch in massive um which is this like justice sounding bass put this little melody in, it was just the first thing that came to my head, um, bounced it out, chopped it up. So once that's chopped up, it sounds like this. So there's me just chopping it like the parts I wanted. And then I also just played with this original sound here um, and bounced out different versions of it. So there's like some with the filter slightly down, some with the different kind of envelope. You get this. These little bits here. Which are the same sound, just minuscule changes. I then used this sound. There's also a little bit of reverb automation if you wanted to see that. Uh, I bounced it out again. And I bring it down here and then, whoa. Okay, that's a weird sound. Um, this is the same sound, just pitched up 19 semitones. So that's an octave and a fifth, I think. Um, and the reason I did that here and not in the synth itself is just so it sounds a bit terrible. So when you layer it on top, it's like, it's not the same time, so it's going to just sound more like something that's providing grit and depth to the sound as opposed to it just being a harmony. Um, this one has got isotope trash on it, um, which just ruins the sound. I mean, it sounds like a bee or like a wasp, uh, which I guess <laughs> was the idea. Um, using a sample delay as well, and the reason I'm doing this is just to spread it out to the sides, just so it's a layer and that it's not interfering with the phase of the original one. Um, just getting rid of all the lows with the EQ. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for the kind of main sound. And then there's these little ones which have a little bit of saturation on, but that's pretty much it. And then these two down here are just harmonies. Of what's happening here yeah and then for some reason in this uh, bus there's also this strange airy blip thing to be fair <laughs> and that was like I remember stumbling across that like a happy accident um, I can't even remember what it was but it just sounded really cool on top of uh, the lead there you go so once I'd once I'd like kind of got the main sound, I wanted to beef it up, make it sound like one big kind of bass almost that was acting as a lead. So the first thing I did would be to add a sub bass. Super simple sub bass, just something I use a lot. Um, and then we have this just this cut. So this is actually cut from Genesis. Just one tiny bass sound from Genesis. Um, and that's just like playing off the main bass line. Um, 
And then on top of that sub bass, there's like a, a lower mid bass sound. Uh, this is a saw wave in Serum. I'm pretty sure it's just a standard saw wave. Um, running through trash again to give it that like tonality. Um, and then I'm just getting rid of some of the high ends because it's very, it was a very piercing sound. And this is just acting as a mid bass. So that with the sub, you got your low end covered there. And then we move on to this crush bass. So this if I remember rightly, is a sample. Yeah, it's like an 808 that has loads of noise on, and then when the 808 and the noise are being distorted together, you get this crunchy thing, um, and then I'm just literally getting rid of all of the low end from that, so it's just like the crunch that the noise creates. So there you go. And that with the main sound... And that's filling up most of the frequency spectrum, as you can see. Um, and then, obviously, we got like some slap basses just to give it that disco-esque feel. Um, and these just extra little bass cuts down here. to make the bass sound a little bit more interesting. Um, and then it, it's kind of like an AB like type melody, like a call and response. So we've got the... There's that gap in the middle. And that's uh, these like synth chops are playing off that. So the synth chops, synth chops, are um, these are just samples, I believe. So classic vengeance sample, um, another vengeance sample. This one's being slammed with a bit crusher, which is what gives it that like noisy sound. And then we've got this sound. Piano cut, so I'd have just bounced that out from a piano. Um, and a cymbal, just to give uh, that some high end little kick as well. And then you get this. Um, and then down here, it's just slightly different rhythm, as you can see. Um, and that's all there is really for that. Uh, the piano sounds also being a bit crushed, I think. So that's the kind of, of like main melodic idea in the drop. And once I'd had that, I'd probably add in some drums and then add in all the other little sounds which connect the track together. So the drums, the drums are like, it's not four to the floor. It's, it's four, four, but it's not four to the floor. So you've got to kick on every one and three and then the snares on the two and four so it's like a straight just funk beat but without the kick hitting on every single beat so we've got a kick drum um, there's a little envelope on there just boosting the attack and a little EQ don't know what that's doing then we've got a and uh, these snares here so that this is the main snare and it's it's a DTX sample and that kind of typical French house kind of sound in like the 2000s, they were all using like DTX and Lindrum samples and stuff like that. So this snare is massive. Just uh, boosting the attack a little bit with the DS-10. Um, but then, you know, that on its own is like, it's cool and it works, but amongst those synths, which are such like high energy and like loud and in your face, um, the snare gets a little bit lost. So I just laid it up with uh, these other ones here. 
I think that's also a DTX sample, but the clap. And then there's this haywire snare, just given the high end. Um, and then there's this clap that hits on the every other snare. And then I also added this other like, uh, like transient layer for the snare here. Um, and then all the snares together. Get this big sounding thing. Then we have these crashes, which are a different layer. And these play, um, they basically imitate the rhythm of the main bass sound. And that's basically just to even thicken up that sound, no, thicken up that sound even more, um, fill up all of that frequency spectrum so that then there's no need to add any unnecessary other bits. Okie dokie. Then we've got these typical just uh, four to the floor hats, little extra drum samples. Um, and then the effects down here, this first one is a layer of four sounds, five including this choir, which is basically the big hit at the, the, at the start of the drop. Um, so you've got like some white noise and a crash, a disco string, and then a sample from uh, a Carly Minogue record, um, which you might have already picked up on. Um, and then over into the B part of the drop, there's only two new bits of information uh, introduced really. There's this main pluck sound which just keeps the energy driving without any processing. A little bit boring, really. And then there's this like 16th note kind of LFO vocal. Um, and I just really love how this like, how like it slides into it. Um, I can't remember how I did that. I think that might be part of the original sample. But I'm also automating the reverb down there just so it sounds like it's coming out of a big space. And then the tremolo sort of thing itself. Um, using the tremolo plugin. And then the OTT afterwards, which gives it that extra bite. Um, and then one thing I've actually just forgotten to mention is these chords here. which are a massive part of the drop. So let's go over them quickly. There's this sound from Gladiator. Very big sounding saws. Piano, just... Uh, and th the reason that I'm processing this like this is I'm almost reverse engineering the sample so that it sounds bad in a way. Uh, I'm like adding bit, um, a bit crusher and also an OTT, which is doing a hell of a lot of multiband compression um, and a Saturn, um, which makes it just sound more like it's a sample from an old record. This other sound, I think that's also from Gladiator. There you go. Um, also in the second part of the drop, sorry, this is actually a lot to go through. Um, you've got some shakers and some extra percussion. And then in the bass line, we have this uh, extra synth, which is added. Which is basically another variation of that uh, main massive preset that I showed you at the start. Just more like filtered in that one. Um, bit of EQ because it's a little bit harsh. Um, what am I doing on Pro Q? Just getting rid of this like muddiness here. Um, and that's quite a wide sound and it was getting lost in the mix. So I just duplicated it down and made a mono version, edited it slightly. It sounds terrible. But it's just to provide that uh, central like mono information. 
layer that with a sub fat fat sound so there you have it there's the drop let's go into the break so going into the break coming out of the drop in the last beat there's these um roads and an organ which are just i love the sound of these two together and that instantly just gives you the vibe that okay we're going into a completely new section now um because before when these two sections were together they kind of sounded a little bit too contrasting so this was just a nice little element to introduce this section that Rhodes then carries on and we go into these like typical disco like sl uh, slash chords and these chords are basically it's so the top chord is playing like a C like a C major triad and then the bottom the root note is playing a D where, where you'd usually play a C we're playing a D and that's how you get that like disco feel so this is C over D, I believe. And then another slash chord, I think. I think that's just a B add nine. B flat add nine. So there you go. And it's just those two chords throughout the break. Um, and then you just got like a bass. It's 808 really. Um, and then the main sound in the break is this sample cut here, which is the most Daft Punk like thing I've ever heard. It's I can't even remember where this original sample was from. I can't remember if I made it, um, bounced it out and chopped it up, or it's just a sample from somewhere completely chopped up and rearranged. But this is what it sounds like with no processing same chords um so we start with ott which again like i'm i'm, re I'm almost reverse engineering this to make it sound really compressed but also really kind of old almost um then there's a pro q just get just taming some of those harsh peaks this is just adding some attack to the sample um, I'm filtering it out here which I'm just automating up and then space designer just a reverb which is not even on is it ah, it's just doing this reverb automation here Endless Smile, Direction Mixer, these are all just for automation, uh, really. Volume Shaper, Tremolo, and Gain. And then you have this. Okay, that's not what we have. And then these ones here are just like uh, different versions of the same sound. So they have like the main sample, it sounds very disco-y. Um, and then I'm just layering that with this synth. And this just lifts the entire thing up and, and helps you kind of hear it amongst like bigger sounding synths and stuff like that. Uh, there's this little disco string. Uh, I think there's some more strings somewhere. Yeah, we've got a lot of strings. Glockenspiel. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and then there's also this, like, chic type guitar. Classic sort of funk thing going on. It's very, very hard to hear in the track, but it just kind of brings up that disco vibe again. We've got the Selena. Just the fire sound used in everything. Um, and then when, when the drums and, and everything else comes in, we've got the bass. It's 
So we've got that big, like, saw sounding bass. Uh, this wide one, which kind of plays off this other one. This is uh, ES2. Beautiful. Um, and this is just a sample, I think. Is it? Yeah, it's a sample in context. Um, and then the slap. There's a little vengeance sound here as well. Dope. And then the drums are pretty much the same as the drop. They're just more stripped back, like because I wanted the drop to just sound bigger than this. Um, it's pretty much the kick, the original snare, and a clap. Um, yeah, and then we move on to the vocal. So the vocal was the last thing that we did in the track. I wasn't even going to have a vocal in this originally, but I wanted to just create this kind of breakdown, which was very different to the drop and the first break. So that's why we decided to add the vocal in the end. Um, super simple lyrics. Uh, Sam wrote this with me again, and Sam is actually singing on this. Um, yeah, we can make you move from side to side, blah, 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 blah. But it's kind of just all about adding to the vibe. So the processing on this is looking painful to my eyes, but let's go through it. We're going to make you move from side to side. This was a challenge mixing this vocal because we didn't want something that was too clean in the track. We wanted it to kind of fit in with that retro vibe, but we also didn't really want it to sound like Sam in a way. Um, but anyway, so that... I tried to make it sound vintage, um, but it then, in turn, was very hard to mix. So, there's just a bit of pitch correction going on, nothing special. EQ, doing basically nothing. The glue compressor. Um, a de-esser. We gonna make you move from side to side. We gonna make this is just getting rid of some of the nasty frequencies in Pro-Q. Effect rack is doing a lot. So without this, we gonna make you move with it from side to side. We gonna make you okay, lose. It's not actually doing that much. Uh, CLA just doing the standard stuff. Another EQ getting rid of some some of the very similar frequencies actually. Um, Transx wide, which is just bringing out the transients in Sam's vocal. Um, multi band compressor, which is just bringing out that high end because it's we sung it on this mic, which I don't know if you can hear, but this is an SM7B, so there's not a lot of high end to it, it's mostly kind of low frequencies. And because we rushed it, we didn't have time to record it properly, um, we just brought out the high end with this, which works, I guess. Removing pretty much the same frequencies again, um, and then. In the buses here, this is being sent to um, this plugin that I downloaded called the Cornet, which is kind of emulating these like old microphones. Um, so if I just solo this for you, you can kind of hear what I'm saying. And then I'm using a rotor cabinet just to make it sound a bit wider. But I, I, I didn't want it like, I didn't want that to be Sam's vocal. I just wanted to do that in parallel and just feed it into the, the original vocal so we could hear what, still hear what Sam was saying. Then we just got some dubs and BVs. We gonna make you move. Simple side stuff side. there. Don't need to run through that. But the thing that makes this cool and sound very, very disco funky um, is me and Sam were just in this room with the gain way up on the mic, just chanting in different voices like, we gonna make you move. And we gonna make you move. We gonna make you move. And then you get this. From side to side. We gonna make you lose. Uh, Which side. they they sound pretty bad on their own, but they they're just acting as a layer. We gonna make you move. From side to side. Just some delay throws lose. as well. Uh, inside your mind. Oh, we gonna get you through this. And then so it starts in the, the low octave, and then when the drums and everything kick in. Sam sings the higher layers here. We gonna make you move from side to side. We've also got a another chant in here as well, which is introduced. We gonna make you move from side to side. We gonna make you lose. Oh, in 
There you go, that's it. The final bit that I think I'll run through is this uh, tempo change. And it's not actually a tempo change. A lot of you have been asking about this. Um, it is basically just me speeding up a sample, which kind of emulates a tempo change, I guess. Um, so this is the sound for those that haven't heard it. You think it's going to end here? And it keeps going. It just keeps rising. So, I achieved this um, by literally bouncing out this word, funkin. What I did is I put this into a sampler track in Logic and in the EXS24. And I just created loads of notes. Like, just, I put, I just kept repeating the funkin for ages. Like, very, 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 very long. And then I bounced that out. So you've just got loads of Funkins next to each other. Then I put it back in the sampler track. And then once it's in the sampler track, what, what I can do is pitch it up within the sampler. And when you pitch something up within the EXS24, it speeds up. So if you've got enough Funkins or enough like samples or whatever, then it will just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And then what I did is I did it again but from when it had hit this pitch here and pitched it up another octave and then joined them together and then it's all about just um, adding the effects and just controlling it with bits and bobs like here I'm just adding in this like comb filter and the endless smile makes a massive difference like it just reverbs it out crazily and this one just keeps going. There you have it. So yeah, there you go, guys. I hope that was helpful for you and you learned something from this. Um, I just want to thank you all again for all the love and support on Orbit so far. It's been amazing. And I've got some really cool stuff to announce soon, which I can't wait to share with you guys. Um... And if you haven't already, join my Discord server in the description. And that's where all the announcements come first and you can keep up to date with everything. You can chat, you can share tunes, whatever you want. So yeah, have a wicked week.